boy. Hello, Nick, aka Sporp here. I've I've filmed this video, I don't know how many times at this point. It's hard to get the phrasing right. It's hard to convey the, convey the message. Today is Tuesday, February fourteenth. And last Friday, I quit my job. I was a senior software engineer for a startup. After being a mid-level, a junior to a mid-level software engineer at a different startup for three years prior to that. And... You know, I initially made the jump because I wanted the title. I wanted... I was I was managing AWS stuff. I was helping plan, design, and build features. And I was getting tired of not getting recognized for essentially doing a senior job. So I said peace to my last company. And I went on board to this new one. And then a friend of mine passed away. He was 25, it was an accident. And it has completely changed the way that I see the world. It has completely changed my day to day, my night to night. Poochie's just sniffing. I've been pretty hella depressed and I just, I couldn't get this mental image of my soul slowly evaporating through the pores of my body every day I sat at that chair. And that's a feeling that has been constant with every job that I've had. This, this feeling of, I don't know if waste is the right term, but just this, this feeling of exchanging of life for money. And at this point, seeing a friend of mine, who, I don't know if he had a bright or a not so bright future, but he definitely had a crazy future. And a crazy life up to that point. And I, I just, <laughs> I'm not supposed to compare, but there's just so much that I want to do. I have, I have these constant stream of awesome and terrible ideas. And so I got a little money saved up. I have no backup plan. There's no other job I'm leaping into. This is a hell of a time to quit my job. But I just. Needed to change. I've also just been thinking about this dog. This pooch is eight years old. Sam and I got him when he was five or so. We got him from a, a shelter in New York City. And like me, he just sits around at home all day. Waiting for Sam to come home. Waiting for his walk. And I know, you know, you, you could just go out and walk more and live more life, but it's just, there's this weird lack of ownership of the self when you're working for somebody else where I just felt like I couldn't leave my desk, even if I wasn't really doing anything. And these might just be personal mental hangups, but... spending so much of my life indoors and I needed to, I needed to change something and so I got rid of my cash flow and my security and so here we are day two of freedom it's done nothing to quell the anxieties of my chest just given me other things to be anxious about. I've been fighting to figure out healthcare for the past, I think, 
gosh knows how many days. I still gotta pay taxes. It's just this. I don't know if what I've made is the right or the wrong decision. <laughs> it feels stupid. So where are we going? This walk is called Lovingly. I got this name from my girlfriend's granddad. The end, the edge of the earth, the edge of the world. It's a cliff that looks over the Delaware River. That <laughs> back when he and his wife ran a daycare for kids, he used to just march three, four, five-year-olds down this path to a, a, a cliff face. Just a gaggle of kids. They all made it, and they're all fine. But it's just funny how things change, and how much... I don't know how much more security we have now. How much less we risk take. How, how if there is even the chance of something negative happening, we just don't leap or go. And now that I've quit my job, I have zero alternative income. I've seen money come in through other means prior, through donations on my coffee page, through, I don't even have the ads on this channel. I, but I, like, I got the Kickstarter funded too. It, it's out there. I might just be too nervous or risk averse of a person to claim it. I think what I'm just buying at this point is some time to grieve. I've lost my friend, I lost my grandfather last year, and I've just been thinking a lot about death, which is never... I know I've been looking a lot into Buddhism as well, because I've just been considering flaking and flopping back and forth between the two options of is there some sort of eternal life after this? Is there some sort of reincarnation where we're doomed to repeat the same life and decisions for all eternity? Is it just nothing? And there's never any answer. And whenever I delve deep enough within myself to find that, that light at the end of the tunnel, when I reach it, I just come back to the now. The here, the, the here and now. Which might be all there is. Ever. The here and now is not so bad. There's a lot of snares and traps and there's a lot of rope all around us at all times with sweet promises that also just have enough length to hang yourself on. And it just feels like everything's an uphill battle when it comes to the fucking paperwork of identification. And just these layers and layers of red tape. And I, I just have this feeling that all this exists so that we don't have to interact with that thought of our impending demise. All these red tapes and issues and stressors, they just exist so you don't have to deal with the nagging question that can never be answered. And when I get to that thought, things get kind of warbly and wiggly and wobbly and it just feels like I'm floating in quicksand that has waves that are crashing through it and 
I, I, I cling on to the self, the observer, the outline of whoever I am, because nothing else seems sturdy. One day I'll close my eyes and an eternity will pass and then my eyes might open again and it'll feel like nothing happened, but everything will be different. Everything will change. So why not just be here now? With the I was talking about this last night when I was also trying to convey these thoughts of there are different kinds of death too. There's old death, which is usually just like a shrug and a you know, they lived a good life. You, you cry a couple tears, but Then you, you put the person away in their box, you wrap it up, seal it with a kiss, and you send them on their way and you say, you know, you did good. You did good with what you had. There is suicide, which I've seen one close and one a little bit more distant, where it's horrifying and the question of why just crops up everywhere through everyone's mouth I don't get it I don't understand it which is I feel like if you just haven't done enough introspection yeah it's hard to understand but this is in some some days some weeks some months some years are just extended nightmare scenarios where it's just doom and gloom every day you're losing traction every day you're losing progress it's the, it's the awareness of the never-ending treadmill that is life and maintaining what you are and who you are and how in some in some aspects it is a pointless endeavor But it is, we're talking back to Buddhism again, the jewels, um, the quilt, the, the nodes that are, the nodes that exist due to the fabric of connections of how we are all defined relatively to everything else that is around us, the whole truth is a paradox thing. Seeing a node of a person just get ripped by choice, saying, I am choosing to rip myself out of this quilt, it's horrifying. And it's it's a reminder that, yeah, that is, that's an option. That is a way that you can end your story. And it's that one song, Suicide is Painless, it is for you. And it destroys everyone who loves you. It destroys, for a long time, any semblance of family and connection, and it's just horrifying how much it affects everyone in that network. When there is young death, accidental. keep hearing these two phrases in my head from my friend passing away and it's box truck and scooter and declared dead on arrival and I keep hearing his father from 
the wake in my head of it feels like my heart has been ripped out of my chest and I just hear these things and I try to sleep at night and I see eyes in the darkness I don't know if they're judging me I don't know if they're just watching I don't know if it's me watching me which in some semblance it is but is it is it the me watching me is it the all-knowing watching me is it a piece of the all a piece of the all that is not me watching me but it just feels like i'm i have a gift of the now of the present and i spend all of it or so much of it just focusing on things that i don't care about or things that don't matter to me and things that are just stressful and awful and And I realize things aren't so serious because I have a dog that vacuums up every piece of poop <laughs> that he finds. <sighs> so, I bought myself a little bit of freedom after... 27, 28 years of doing the things that I've been told I always should be doing. And now it's time to... I don't know. I don't know if... It's that endless question of what should be done at the moment, what's important enough, what is that low-hanging fruit that really matters, and... It's all really about the journey anyway. Dude, you don't have to pull so hard. We're going to the same place. This is about the part where I start to think to myself, so a bunch of tiny little kids used to walk down this. A bunch of fearless little dinguses. Dude, don't pull me down the mountain. Going to the same place. It's 
slowly. I'm thinking a lot about life and death. The tension that exists between them. And that's where we're at. Polar opposite forces. Really being the same thing. Dude, chill. Okay, keep going. Relax, relax. You're gonna pull me down the mountain. You ain't getting home, buddy. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Come on. bunch of tiny little kids used to climb all over this rock. Oh. So, quick TLDR. Ya boy! Either is making the best or the worst decision of his life. TBD. What do you think, Oliver? I've already been coming out here more ever since I quit, so. you're well. See you.